League Winners Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the League Winners Podcast. This is your soon-to-be number one fantasy football podcast. Um, this season is going to be a lot of great things happening. We're going to start off with my top 25 fantasy football running backs. Uh, this is all pre-draft, so everything is subject to change. Just going based off of what happened last year and all of the off-season moves that I talked about previously, we're going to really uh, be updating this list a whole lot. So uh, let's just get into it. All right, so we're going to kick off the list with number 25. Number 25, I'm going to go with Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary recently got traded to the Giants, and uh, Saquon Barkley is no longer there. So I feel like Devin Singletary is going to be a good running back two option for you. So Devin Singletary had about 900 yards last year, four touchdowns. He wasn't too outstanding with the Texans. We know that he was splitting time with Damian Pierce in the beginning of the season. And um, I feel like this season is going to be a big up season for him. He's going to really be able to showcase his potential and show what he's able to do being the number one running back. Number 24 on the list, we got Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara used to be a star in fantasy football, but recently things just haven't been looking too great for him. So last year he had about 700 yards, five rushing touchdowns, and only one receiving touchdown, which is a crazy surprise for me. Um, Alvin Kamara, I got him at number 24 because I feel like He's going to have a little better year than he had last year. Um, my projections for Kamara would probably be around 900 yards, um, probably around eight rushing touchdowns, and I think he's going to get his receiving touchdown numbers up a good bit. I'd say, I say about six or seven receiving touchdowns this year for Alvin Kamara. So number 23 on the list, I got Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards last year finished off with the 13th to 14th spot in fantasy football. I think that was mostly because of the amount of touchdowns he had last year. He had 13 touchdowns. He only had 800 yards, though, to go with those 13 rushing touchdowns, zero receiving touchdowns. Um, he's with the Chargers this year. So I feel like the Chargers are going to run the ball a lot with Jim Harbaugh being their head coach. You know, he's old school. He loves to run the ball. Um, Gus Edwards, I could see his numbers uh, rushing yard-wise going up a little bit, especially because there's no competition in the backfield. Um, I would put him at about 1,100 yards as well. Um, I don't know if he's going to get 13 touchdowns. I could, I could possibly put that around 10 rushing touchdowns, but at receiving touchdowns, I've seen him getting four or five receiving touchdowns, along with maybe another three, 400 yards receiving. So he's, he's my number 23 pick. So the 22 spot, I'm gonna give that to Isaiah Pacheco. Last year, Isaiah Pacheco had a pretty good year with the Chiefs. He had about a thousand yards. Um, he had seven touchdowns. I think he only had one or two re receiving touchdowns. And I feel like his numbers receiving wise could potentially go up. He could, he could be definitely looking at three or four maybe even five or six receiving touchdowns this year. Um, rushing wise though, I definitely put him around the same, same amount of yards, probably 1200 at max yards for Isaiah Pacheco. And uh, seven touchdowns seems a little light for him. I could definitely see him getting 11 or 12 touchdowns. You know, he'll be in the Chiefs offense and the Chiefs, they love to move the ball up and down the field. So that's why he's at my 22 spot. Someone around the same range as Isaiah Pacheco is number 21, who's James Conner for me. James Conner, um, you know, he's going to be playing with the Cardinals. They're one of those iffy offenses. You don't know what they're going to do week to week. They might have a good week. They might have a bad week. But um, the one consistent thing they have had is James Conner. So I feel like he's worthy of the 21 spot. Um, he's definitely an RB2. Um, he's going to have about the same production as he had last year. Last year he had a uh, thousand yards, seven touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. I say he, he might be a little higher than that this year. Um, he might go off for 1,100, 1,200 yards. Um, touchdown wise though, I really see his touchdown numbers going up just because I feel like that offense is going to get a little better this year. So they're going to have more goal line chances this year than they had last year. He's definitely one of those people that they give the ball to a lot in the red zone. And um, his touchdown numbers, I feel, are going to go up. He's probably going to have about 10 rushing touchdowns, maybe even four or five receiving touchdowns. So I feel like the 21 spot for him is pretty good. He's definitely going to be a running back, too, like I said. The number 20 spot, I'm going to give it to Najee Harris. Um, Jalen Warren came into town. He definitely got a lot of carries. Them having Kenny Pickett at quarterback, they were definitely running the ball a whole lot between Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. I feel like Najee Harris had a pretty decent season. He, he got over a thousand yards. 
Um, he even got eight touchdowns. I feel like his touchdown numbers could go up. I feel like his yards could go up. I feel like he might even get some receiving touchdowns this year because last year he finished off with zero. Um, my projections for him, I would say, I'd say probably around 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns, and uh, three or four receiving touchdowns as well. So number 19, number 19, we're going with Zach Moss, man. Zach Moss being with the Bengals this year, I feel like he's going to have a fantastic year. Last year, he had a good year, and he was just filling in for Jonathan Taylor. And while he was filling in for Jonathan Taylor, he did everything that he was supposed to do. And um, I feel like this year is going to be even more productive year for him. He's going to have more touchdowns than he had last year. He's definitely going to be looking at around 12 or 13 touchdowns this year. There might even be some games where he scores two or three touchdowns a game. Um, you know, the Bengals have a high-flying offense as long as Joe Burrow is good and he's not injured. So Zach Moss, he's definitely worthy of that 19 spot. He might even be a little higher to finish off the year, to be honest with you. Next on my list at number 18 is DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift had a great year last year, 1,000 yards with the Eagles. Uh, I think he had about five touchdowns rushing, four touchdowns receiving. Um, I might not be on point with those numbers, but I think that's what he had. This year he's going to be playing with the Bears, though, and I feel like the Bears are going to utilize him a lot, especially with a rookie quarterback. They're going to have to run the ball a lot just to give him some space and open things up on the field for him. So I feel like DeAndre Swift, he's going to have a good year, man. I would definitely, definitely look for him. He might even finish as an RB1, to be honest with you. I have him here at 18, but he could be in that top 12. Um, I feel like he's probably going to get about 1,300 yards this season, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like his touchdown numbers are going to be pretty high. Uh, it really depends on if Caleb Williams is still in his touchdowns or not. I feel like Caleb Williams isn't going to want to run the ball a whole lot. I feel like he's going to be a pocket passer. He's going to hand the ball off to DeAndre Swift. And um, I could see him having 12 or 13 touchdowns this year. Yeah, so number 17 is going to be Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is going to be playing with the Commanders this year, probably playing with Jaden Daniels. Like I said, this is pre-draft. I don't know who they're going to be drafting, but I feel like it's probably going to be Jaden Daniels. Um, last year, he only had about 700 yards rushing, 500 yards receiving, and he didn't have anywhere near the amount of touchdowns that he had previous years. Um, I know he let a lot of people down. I know he went first, second, or third in a lot of drafts last year, and he let those people down. This year, though, I feel like his stock dropped a little bit. But I feel like his production is going to increase a whole lot from where it was last year. I'd give Austin Eckler probably about 800 yards rushing, probably about 600 yards receiving. But I feel like his touchdown numbers are really going to take an increase this year. Number 16. Number 16, I'm giving you Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard played for the Cowboys last year, but he's no longer a Cowboy anymore. He plays for the Titans now. He's going to be filling in for Derrick Henry. Um, I feel like he's going to have a pretty decent year this year. Last year, he didn't have the greatest season. That's why the Cowboys, they were okay with letting him go. Um, he only had 1,000 yards, didn't have many touchdowns. I feel like this year, though, playing with Will Levis, Malik Willis, Mason Rudolph, or whoever they draft, I feel like they're going to need to run the ball. So Tony Pollard's going to get a lot of touches, man. I feel like Tony Pollard's touchdown numbers are definitely going to increase from where they were last year. Number 15, I'm bringing you all Kenneth Walker to third. He had about 1,000 yards last year. He had about eight touchdowns. I feel like his numbers are just going to increase. It's only his, what, third season now? I feel like he could definitely be at 1,200 yards this season. Um, I don't see them throwing the ball a whole, whole lot more than they did last year, so he's definitely going to get the ball. Um, his touchdown numbers, I could see them potentially going up to probably around 10 touchdowns, maybe, maybe a couple more receiving touchdowns. He only had one receiving touchdown last year. So that's why I got him in number 15. I feel like he's a good lock-in pick for RB2. Number 14 for me, I'm going James Cook. Even though James Cook had a great season last year, finished with about 1,100 yards, I think he only finished with two rushing touchdowns, which is a crazy surprise. He finished like 10th place uh, fantasy-wise, though. And um, I feel like he's just going to add on to those rushing touchdowns, man, especially with Diggs not being there. I don't know if the Bills are going to draft a receiver, but if they do draft a receiver, they're still going to be running the ball a lot. And I feel like James Cook, he does have a lot of potential. He had about four receiving touchdowns. I think receiving touchdowns probably stay the same. But uh, rushing touchdowns, I definitely see him get more than two touchdowns this year. He could potentially be an RB1 for you. I don't know how high he's going to be going in drafts, but I got him at my 14 spot. Number 13, number 13 was tough for me because Jonathan Taylor... Uh, two years ago, he was that guy for me, man. Jonathan Taylor did some big things for me two years ago. And last year, 
he missed some time. Um, Anthony Richardson was looking like a stud last year in the beginning of the season, and Anthony Richardson went down. And I don't know, man. Jonathan Taylor, I, I got you at 13. I feel like he's definitely going to build on the numbers he had last year. That's, like, given for sure. But I, I got him at 13 for now. So the first person to crack my RB1 spot is Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb was injured last year. He's coming back this season, though. I feel like Nick Chubb got some business to take care of, and Nick Chubb's going to be an RB1 again. And, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's not much to go off of last year for Nick Chubb, but this year I feel like Nick Chubb's definitely going to be an RB1. So with my 11th spot, they just changed teams and now plays for the Packers. I'm going with Josh Jacobs in my 11th spot. Josh Jacobs was the Russian leader two years ago. Um, I feel like he's going to have a great season with Jordan Love. That whole team is pretty young, so Josh Jacobs is going to go in there. He's going to be a, a little bit more of a veteran guy in that locker room, and I feel like he's going to get a lot of touches. He's going to get a lot of touchdowns. Um, Projection-wise, I would say he's definitely going to have a much better year than he had last year. He didn't even have 1,000 yards last year. I could put him back at probably 1,200 yards. Um, I'd give him 10 touchdowns. Receiving-wise, I'd probably give him five touchdowns receiving, uh, maybe about two or three maybe 400 yards receiving. So yeah, that's why I got Josh Jacobs, where I got Josh Jacobs. He's definitely gonna be RB1. I think that's already given, especially being on that Packers team. They don't have Aaron Jones no more. AJ Dillon is still there, but Josh Jacobs is definitely the superior running back. So the first one to crack my top 10 will be Brees Hall. Brees Hall had a good season last year. He only had about a thousand yards, five rushing touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns. Um, he played a lot with Zach Wilson. We know Aaron Rodgers went down. Aaron Rodgers should be back this season. They're going to be looking to give him the ball a good bit, though. Even though we know Aaron Rodgers is going to sling it around, I can see Brees Hall's receiving numbers even going up a whole lot. I think he's going to really lock down that running back one spot. And I think that number 10 is a good spot to have him in. So my number nine spot, it might be, might be something that people go back and forth with me about, but I'm, I'm putting Devin A-Chain, Devon A-Chain, however you say his name. I'm putting A-Chain in number nine, though. What I seen from him last year, man, I felt like he was a stud until he got injured. I know Mostert was in there. He was doing his thing. But still, they were both having great games when they were playing. Some, some weeks, they had three touchdowns apiece. So with that being said, man, I feel like A-Chain is definitely worthy of that nine spot. I feel like he's going to have plenty of big runs for you. Um, I feel like he's going to definitely be a running back one for a lot of people. I feel like he's probably going to surpass Mostert this year. I think last year, being a rookie, they didn't really want to push him in as the running back one, but I think this year he's going to secure that running back one spot. I could see him week one, he's the starter out there. So number eight, number eight for me is Jameer Gibbs, man. Jameer Gibbs, he was, he was great for the Lions last year. Even though Montgomery stole a lot of his touchdowns, Montgomery had a pretty good season himself, but I feel like Gibbs really towards the end of the season was was breaking through and showing that he's a very, very talented running back. Um, same thing with A-Chain and Monster, man. I feel like coming into this season, we're probably going to see Gibbs starting. I would actually be surprised if week one comes and Gibbs is not the starter for the Lions. I feel like Gibbs is a freaking... I feel like Gibbs is just way too talented, way too fast, and he's a true weapon for them. So I feel like going into week one, he's probably gonna be their starter. So that's why I got Gibbs in my number eight spot. Number seven for me, I'm going with Derrick Henry, man. Derrick Henry going to the Ravens is gonna be huge for them. It's gonna be huge for Derrick Henry. He's gonna be on a great team. I feel like being with one of the hardballs, you know the hardballs love to run the ball. So I feel like Derrick Henry's probably gonna even have more yards than he had last year. And he had like 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns last year. I could see him pushing 15, 20 touchdowns this year, to be honest with you. I would not be surprised. That would be, that's my bold pick right now, man. I could see Derrick Henry getting 20 touchdowns this year. Number six, I got Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne finally had a good season, man. I know that his first season didn't go too well, but this year I feel like he's gonna have an even better year than he had last year. He had about 11 touchdowns last year, and that's why he finished with the fourth overall running back position um, in fantasy football. I feel like he's just going to build on those numbers. I feel like the Jags, they're going to have they're going to have to run the ball a lot, man. Trevor Lawrence, he was looking great in his rookie season. Last year, I feel like he took a little bit of a step back. Hopefully this year he takes a step forward and we really get to see what Trevor Lawrence is about. Regardless though, we know that ETN can run the ball and I feel like he's going to get the ball just as much this year as he did last year. 
and probably around the same production as he had last year. He might have a couple more yards, he might have a couple less yards, but I feel like 11 touchdowns, 12 touchdowns, probably right where I would put him. So the top five, the top five for me, man, I got Saquon Barkley, number five. Saquon going to the Eagles is huge. The Eagles are gonna be running the ball all the time, man. They stopped running the ball last year about halfway through the season. I don't know what happened, but I feel like Saquon being number five is, he might even be number two or three, to be honest with you. But Saquon at five is a safe bet. I feel like Saquon, as long as he stays healthy, man, Saquon is gonna get the ball. He's gonna have plenty of yards and you're gonna have plenty of touchdowns for you. My number four spot, I got Joe Mixon, number four, playing with the Texans this year. Um, last year, he had a really good season. I feel like he's gonna have a pretty good season this year. Um, he's definitely gonna be one of those top running backs. I think he showcased what he can really do last year. He had a lot of touchdowns last year. And um, I think he's gonna have about the same amount of touchdowns this year, maybe the same amount of yards. So um, yeah, that's why I got him at number four. So number three for me, I'm going with Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams for the Rams, he came on last year and I had no idea where he came from. I was not expecting him to be as good as he was, but Kyron Williams looked great last year, man. 1,100 yards, he had a good bit of touchdowns, he had some receiving touchdowns. I feel like he's just gonna add on to those numbers though. Um, I, could, I could see him potentially having 1,300 yards this year. Um, maybe even 15 rushing touchdowns, man. The way he was running the ball last year, he looked great. So that's why I got him at my number three spot. Number two, number two, I'm going with B. John Robinson, man. Last year, I know it wasn't the greatest year for him. They couldn't move that ball on the offense, though. This year, though, with Kirk Cousins being there, his stock is gonna rise so quick. Bijan is gonna have so many touchdowns this year. Man, that number two spot is locked in. That's all I gotta say. Bijan, number two, I'm telling you. You heard it here first. Number one, I feel like we all know who number one is. It's not really a surprise. Number one, it's gotta be CMC, man. This guy's just been so unstoppable, especially with the 49ers, man. He's been so healthy with the 49ers. Um, I feel like CMC is just a lock for number one. Um, I don't know if he's gonna go first overall in a lot of drafts, but he's definitely gonna be the number one running back off the board. If you don't take CMC number one, I don't know where your head's at, but I feel like he's gonna have the same production as he had last year, man. Same production as he had last year. This guy had multiple touchdowns in so many games. I think he had a touchdown in every single game last year. So he's just gonna build on those numbers, man. CMC number one, it's not even a question about it. So that was all for this episode. I hope I gave y'all a little bit of insight. As I said, this is a pre-draft video. After the draft, things had definitely changed though. Um, we don't know who's going to be drafted backups. We don't know what's going to happen in the draft yet. But when the draft does happen, man, I'll update this list. So we get closer to the season, I'll probably update it again. Um, if you agree with what I said, if you think that any of these running backs should be higher, anybody should be lower, anybody that got left off the list, man, leave it in the comments, man. I'll be able to read it, take a look at it, really think about it some more. And I might add them on the list later. You never know. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed it though, and I'll see y'all on the next one.